guys and welcome back to another video on Mark and today I am just going to be going through some of the changes I made. So I did want to record my process of making this these features, however it was too complicated um, uh, for me to, to, to do while talking, while commentating. It was just a little hard for me to focus and recording it even just recording it without talking while doing it for some reason like I wasn't able to do it I just could not focus I needed to like take my headset off pop in uh, a show to to listen to in the background and then code so that's why I didn't record that but I'm just gonna go over the changes that I made because they are pretty major changes uh, let's uh, first off delete some imports um, some unnecessary imports and head over to the changes I made. Um, so we are not going to be going over the Mark Core. So the changes I made were to the plugin manager. So I first made a comms package um, that holds the transceiver. The transceiver I am not finished yet, but let's just go over the four methods that I made um, for this transceiver. The transceiver is the it's going to be in the message manager, if you will, of the uh, core um, core program of Mark. So it's going to first off queue messages. So this method called queue message uh, will queue a message. Now I actually forgot to put in <laughs> the actual message that's going to be queued. So at param message um, uh, being queued slash sent. Okay, so uh, this public static void queue method queue message, it's a uh, static that way I can queue a message from wherever. So queuing a message means that it will write a message within the the specified pr uh, file. Um, and then uh, over here I have the check inbox. Checks inbox um, slash any unread messages. So this check inbox method uh, should actually be a public static string, right? And um, right now it's going to return null um, because uh, I haven't set up this feature. But this will uh, get the last uh, the last message that was received um, in the entire program. Um, so. Uh, let's just delete this because we don't need that. Uh, get that's redundant. That was the same thing as this check inbox method. And then we have this get last message, um, uh, and the parameters is the file is the origin. So this is just getting the last message from the specified uh, file, um, and that is also going to be a string, which we will return null for now. Um, that because I haven't set up that feature. Uh, but yeah, I just set up this transceiver file. Now the actual changes uh, happened in the um, these two these three files and mainly in this one giant plugin registry file. So let's start off with this object I made. It's called plugin because it represents a plugin. Uh, the plugin object holds the information to all of uh, all of uh, the attributes and all of the attributes, okay, all of, okay, sorry, uh, let's restart. So this plugin object, the plugin object holds the information to all the attributes and children of the associated plugin. So, um, and actually, before we get into that, I forgot to add the version tag. I'm just gonna copy and paste it from here because I'm too lazy to write it myself. There we go. Um, so, since, yeah, uh, so this plugin, uh, first has, uh, the, all three of these, or not three, all five of these attributes. So let's first start off with these, uh, first four. So we have the default files, including directories, uh, the default files would include the root directory, the jar file, the actual jar file, the program or the program that is actually being run. Uh, the messenger and the receiver, these are text files, which I just explained. The messenger is used, the messenger file is used to send messages. So 
let's say a plugin needs to send a message to the main uh, to the core program then it'll write that message inside of the messenger text file and if the core if this program wants to write a message to the uh, to the plugin then it'll drop the uh, message in the receiver kind of like an inbox next we have the process uh, now it's not set to final because this process object will be modified um, and I'll explain that in a bit um, when we get to the plugin manager our plugin registry I mean so the process of the program that is not file final so that it can be uh, changed um, and then we of course just have our our uh, constructor uh, which uh, just uh, initializes everything um, and let's move on to the plugin manager so instead of a hash map which I was uh, using before in order to store and register or yeah yeah in order to register and store all of the plugins it's just an array list of plugins because now plugins have more than one attribute right so that means that I can't just have a hash map and each each uh, uh, each collection uh, in uh, each collection so before I had a hash map and each collection within the hash map represented two attributes the file and the process however now plugins have more than one attribute for example the jar file the root directory the receiving text file and the sending text file right so the hash map would not would not be enough wouldn't have enough uh i don't know what to call it wouldn't have enough attributes um or slots for me to put in five attributes so i had to change it to an actual object that i made called plugin with which can store the five attributes so now we've kind of made a hash map but with uh five slots to store uh, uh values uh so this this array list just stores all of the plugins that have been registered just like before just in array list form instead of hash map form because uh the plugins now have more attributes than the hash map could hold and next and, but not least uh finally uh last but not least we have the plugin registry uh, this of course implements registry and i found that this uh this system of of registering of creating registries uh, with the interface that I made was actually extremely useful for me it might be, not be considered clean code I'm not entirely sure that's all just personal preference however um, it has been a lot easier on me to create registries and more more importantly it's a lot easier a ton more easier to modify registries so let's start off with the pre-initialization method uh, so let's just go through um, before we get into this let me just go through the hierarchy of a of a file of a plugin um, so let me just whoops let me just minimize some of these tabs and I just realized that the window capture is on and not the display capture. So let's see, plugins, mark core. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, let me just zoom into File Explorer. So this should look familiar. Um, this is Mark Core's uh, uh, hierarchy, but what we're looking in is the Plugins folder, and this will would list all of our plugins. This folder right here, Display Demo. Let me just zoom in. This Display Demo folder represents one plugin. So if I go into it, you can see I have two files. One is a directory, and the other one is a jar file. This jar file is the uh, main program. That's what was listed in the plugins object. It was called jar file, and this is what would be stored in that uh, object. Next is the communications folder, which simply has our two files, message, uh, send and receive. Uh, the send represents the uh, me uh, the um, the what, what did I call it? Uh, messenger, um, and the receive files uh, represents the uh, 
uh, receiver or the inbox slash uh, mailbox. Uh, so that's that's the hierarchy. And now that you've got a sense of that, let's go back to the project right here. And if you take a look here, you can see that in the pre-initialization method, uh, we keep all of the the code for checking whether the plugin's directory exists. Right. The only thing that is different is after we check that, we uh, we need to scan the plugin's directory for all of its plugins, and that's what was changed. So it was changed to accommodate the plugins system the plugins object system that I implemented into the project. Um, so first it iterates through all of the files within the plugins folder um, and it looks for directories more specifically and each of these directories of course represents a plugin in which case that di directory would be called the root directory for that plugin. So uh, the current plugin uh, we create a, a plugin object called current plugin, and then we create three other uh, file objects. One is the jar file, the other one is the messenger, the other one is the receiver. We saw all of those files before, and we of course initialize them to null just in case some or sort of error is encountered. So then we uh, do phase one in our scanning for registering the entire plugin because remember we're gonna have to register three different files number one is the jar file the main program and we're gonna have to store that somewhere in this uh, main program the next one is the messenger and file and the third one is the receiver file right so we have to register all three of those somehow um, so what I do is I iterate through all of the all of the files that it can find within the uh, root directory of the plugin and it should find two files so far at least the first one is the comms folder uh, which rep which uh, is short for communications um, but uh, we want to find the jar file for now more specifically so it'll look for a jar a file uh, called that has the extension dot jar in which case when it finds it it will just set that equal to uh, this jar file object that we j we just created, right? And then once that's done, um, uh, well, sorry, sorry. Uh, otherwise, if it does not find the jar file and it finds the comms directory instead, um, then it will then go inside of that directory and iterate through all of the files in that uh, comms directory, right? It'll look through. Uh, look through all the files within this uh, this directory, the communications directory that it found, and then it will check if the file that we found is called send, uh, and if it is called send.txt, then it'll set the messenger to um, that file, and then if it's called receive, then it's going to set the receiver to the file called receive.txt, um, and then we just uh, skip a few lines. Um, this is just some debugging info, and uh, that means if it found all three of these files, um, then it will just simply uh, skip all of these if statements. If it doesn't, of course, then it'll print out some warnings. Uh, but if it does, then it's just going to say it's going to skip those if statements and go straight to this uh, line on line 105. In which case, it'll set the current plugin object that we first created to a new plugin object. And because the plugin object uh, pass, uh, takes in five different parameters, the first is a root directory, jar file, messenger, receiver, and process, we're going to set the first four to each of the objects that we found. The root directory file is the one that we, j we were iterating through in the first place. It's the origin plugin file. It's the, uh, you know, the root directory. Um, and I should really name this uh, root... I should pro uh, definitely refract or rename this to root directory, right? Uh, that makes more sense. And then uh, we pass in the root directory, the jar file, the messenger, and the receiver, all that we have found. But the process we cannot pass in because we don't have it. We haven't created it, and we want to wait to create it when we're ready to run the pl plugin. So that's why we just pass in null. And that's why the plugin object isn't a record, because a record you you... Uh, cannot change the values of its attributes later on, um, and we're going to change the va the value of process uh, later on. Um, uh, so that's why it's not a record, because originally the plugin object was a record, uh, and I wasn't able to do that. So.
uh, once it has registered the plugin with all of its attributes besides the process, then it will skip on to the initialization phase. Of course, once it's uh, uh, done that same registering sequence of all the files for all of the plugins, then it will go to the initialization phase, in which case it will run all of the programs. Right. So it's going to loop through all of the plugins that we have just registered in the plugin uh, array and it will first create a process builder and this is the same exact uh, same exact uh, initialization method that we had before with this uh, minor difference of these two lines um, line 127 and line 130 and this is just to accommodate the new system so the first change is right here within the parameters of dot directory right uh, because it does process builder dot directory in order to set the preferred working directory in which case we always create a new file but then we have to add in the path now the path of the plugin before it was just the jar file within the plugins folder in which case we're running that that jar file that's within the plugins folder right but we want to get the the path of the folder um, that the that the uh, that the jar file that we're running is inside, so we just do plugin. So we get the plugin that we're that we're currently um, of the current iteration, right? And then we get the we get the root directory, and then we get the path of that root directory, not the absolute path, but the path um, from the point of view of that uh, file. And then once we've set that preferred working directory, then what we need to do is just uh, start that. Uh, that process builder, uh, meaning it's just going to execute all of the processes processes that we specified in the process builder, and we're just going to set that process equal to uh, the process that we defined inside of the plugin plugin object. Um, so that will change it from a null to an actual process, right? And then when we run this program, uh, and look in the console, you can see that the uh, plugin demo was run was uh, yeah, it was it was run successfully, and if we look inside of the console, this might look like a jumble of mess, but um, for me, it's it's very helpful. Uh, we can just skip all the way to this giant block where it says register slash info, right? And it's going to say attempt to scan plugins directory for plugins. All right, we want to look at the actual plugin being uh, scanned. So it found this display demo plugin. It found this directory display demo. Um, it found the directory, so it's attempting to register the plugin. So now that it's found that that uh, that plugin folder, it's going to look through all of the children, and and it's going to look for all three of these objects because it's already found the root directory. Don't need to find it again, and it's going to state if it which uh, files it's found. So it then found the com communications directory, in which case it iterated through each of the files in the res in the communications directory, and it found the receiver and the messenger. So then it registered these, and then after that, uh, after that it found uh, all the children for the communications plugin, and including the it found the, and then it found the jar file for the plugin, and then. Um, once it registered all of that, because it found all of the files it needed to, it, then it's just going to say it successfully registered this specific plugin, uh, which is true. So then um, it's going to do that for each one. There there will be more of these, uh, but once it's done, which there was only one, so it only did it once, it says successfully executed print it, and that's all of the changes we made. And then it, uh, it, it wakes up, so now the program works. And that is the new plugin, uh, plugin uh, registry, or plugin system, uh, for Mark. All right. Uh, thank you for watching. I had a lot of fun making this, making this feature, and uh, hope to see you guys in the next video. See ya.